Hey people of the VC, it's Andy Cloudy Malder. Uh, today I'm going to go on a little bit of a nostalgic uh, trip down memory lane. Actually, well, let me just cut in there. Um, before I go any further, this is a video I put together for Corey at uh, Just Add Vinyl, who used to be Corey's um, VC channel. Um, Corey got in touch with me a, a couple of months ago now and asked if I would be part of his new VT project, which was to um, share memories of uh, FM radio broadcast magazines or um, any way that we got into music back in the 80s before the internet uh, revolution uh, of today. Uh, I was happy to do so and along with uh, John's record rack uh, Darcy at Six String Nine Lives and um, Corey himself. Um, I, I was part of this this great uh, video, and uh, Corey did some excellent editing work. And um, if you haven't seen that video, I will put a link up in um, over there, up there, and down below. Um, please check that out before you watch this one. Um, this video was purely intended uh, for Corey to chop and cut and paste uh, as he wished and put together for the uh, the overall finished article. But I thought it would be fun to upload the full thing and let you kind of see almost like the uh, not the director's cut, but uh, the, the 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 full um, uh, the full experience of, of what I put together uh, that went into that video. I will shut up now and uh, I'll let you go back to me um, over there. Thanks. Um, if you remember back to the 1980s, if you were fortunate to live through that uh, wonderful time, um, there was no internet. Um, discovering new music and um, especially new heavy metal music, it wasn't necessarily the easiest thing to do. I think there were probably four entry points uh, to discovering new music. There was there was word of mouth, but this was limited because uh, I didn't have many friends into heavy metal at all. I was a bit of a, a lone wolf in that department. Uh, there was tape trading, but my experience it was mainly um, uh, tape trading for me wasn't so much in, in the mail order. It was it was more about um, uh, copying other people's records and swapping that way so it tended to be uh, older stuff and by older stuff I've been around the new wave of British heavy metal uh, sort of era early 80s uh, magazines were great but um, you could only read about what was coming out you couldn't actually hear it and then there was radio and radio was really uh, really important uh, for me um, particularly one show and that was the Friday Rock Show which was the only national um, radio show in the UK to champion hard rock and uh, heavy metal. Uh, it was broadcast on the BBC, the Beeb, uh, BBC Radio 1 FM, and it originally ran from 1978 to 1993, and it was hosted by uh, a DJ called uh, Tommy Vance, uh, TV on the radio. On medium wave and FM stereo, this is National Radio 1. The music vendor, welcome to the Friday Rock Show. And uh, he had the, the perfect voice for, for rock radio. I was um, uh, always glued to the um, uh, to the show. So while the Friday Rock Show, starting around 78 and moving to the early 80s, it was pivotal in promoting the new wave of British heavy metal amongst sort of UK uh, radio listeners. Anyway, it wasn't until around 1986 that uh, this spotty adolescent uh, kid that was to become Cloudy Mulder really started to, to take note. New Wave of British Heavy Metal, that was pretty much over. But I was only really just discovering a lot of the bands that were involved in that movement. And a lot of those bands were still part of the uh, the playlist that I would have on a, on a Friday night. Uh, but it was also the time that thrash metal was really um, emerging in the UK and uh, it was a great chance to hear a lot of the uh, the US uh, US East Coast bands um, they were starting to get airplay uh, so it was just such a great time to be, to be alive um, the theme tune for the song uh, for the, the show sorry was um, a track by Dixie Dregs 
called uh, Take It to the Top. I still get goosebumps to this day whenever I, I, I hear it. Um, I did uh, pick up, so these, these are a couple of records that uh, the Friday Rock Show actually uh, produced. The first one was Metal Explosion from 1980 and um, uh, contained a number of uh, New Wave of British Heavy Metal or New Wave of British Heavy Metal influences. Samson, Prey Mantis, Trespass, Taurus, Moore, Money, Gillen and Angel Witch. Um, and then one that was actually called the Friday Rock Show, which was a year later. Obviously, this is way before I, I'd really discovered the show, but I uh, just thought I would uh, pull those out and show them. So this, this Friday Rock Show, the second album, uh, has some Spider, some Diamond Head, Sweet Savage, Last Flight, Demon, Black Axe, Witch Find, and a Zero with an X. So they were pretty cool pickups that uh, I only really discovered fairly um, recently. Um, the theme tune by the Dixie Dregs is not on either of them, which I thought was a bit disappointing, but when I um, uh, pulled up a version of it on YouTube to listen to, it kind of goes on a bit long. I'm used to listening to it for about 30 seconds as the jingle for a radio show, and when it goes on for about uh, uh, three or four minutes, it just seems to go on just a little bit long. Um, so these are the days before the uh, the internet. Um, and as I mentioned, uh, I didn't really have friends to uh, to discuss you know, heavy metal with. So I really relied on the Friday Rock Show to open open my ears to uh, new music that had, uh, that was happening now and also things from you know, the previous few years that I'd, 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 I'd missed um, myself. Um, so the show ran on a Friday night, obviously, the Friday Rock Show. Started at 10 p.m., finished at uh, midnight. So my earliest memories of really listening to it are, um, bearing in mind this is heavy metal, I listened to it at the quietest possible volume. I wasn't allowed to stay up late at the time. Um, even, I guess, being the age of 15, uh, 10 o'clock seems such an early time to go to bed, but that was around the time I used to go to bed at that time. Um, I wasn't allowed to stay up late, and I certainly wasn't allowed to stay up till midnight to watch it. Um, I didn't have headphones either. And I think on many, well, I know for a fact, on many, many occasions, I didn't actually make it through the whole show. I was uh, fast asleep by the time the show had uh, finished. But um, every time I woke up the next morning, the radio was off. Uh, so clearly my parents knew what I was uh, doing and um, so they would obviously come in and just switch the radio off and they never mentioned it at all. Um, so I think that's quite cool. They kind of, it was kind of my taboo thing to do was to stay up and listen to uh, the Friday Rock Show till midnight and, uh, and when I didn't make it, um, you know, they, they, didn't make a, they didn't make any uh, issue of it. Um, so my listening time for this show was from about 1986 to 1989 and it was a great kind of three years by the time 1989 came along I was old enough to sort of go out drinking with my, my mates and uh, that opened up a whole new uh, way of life uh, for me that seemed much more important than uh, staying and listening to a radio show at the time so of course radio wasn't the only source of music as I mentioned so I I used to occasionally pick up Kerrang. Now, Kerrang is obviously a really famous magazine. But it wasn't until Metal Hammer was launched in the UK in 1986 that I really started sort of collecting and picking up um, a music magazine regularly. I, I jumped on it. I thought it was far superior writing to Kerrang, in my opinion, certainly for my age at the time. Um, and I lapped up every article. I, I really wish I still had them, but once they were read, the posters came out, I were up on the wall, and the best <coughs> band shots were, were cut out of the magazine and they were used to cover my school exercise books at the time. So uh, it's a shame I, t I still don't have those now, but um, yeah, still got the memories with them. But while the magazine and the reviews and the uh, upcoming articles and the the articles about the bands were, were absolutely great. It didn't compare to hearing these bands uh, for the first time on the radio. Um, 
So money was limited at the time uh, when I was growing up. I, I was lucky enough to have a, a few records, but certainly not as many as I wanted. So uh, being able to hear some really cool tracks from bands that I, I didn't own anything from was, um, I always look forward to that. So each show would generally have a featured session from a particular artist or even a, uh, a live performance that would get uh, broadcasted uh, at night. Um, I particularly remember the show the night before the Donington Monsters of Rock in 1987, which, as I've mentioned numerous times, was my first ever gig. Um, Tommy Vance was playing tunes, uh, songs by each of the bands on the bill, um, Cinderella, Wasp, Anthrax, Metallica, Dio and uh, Bon Jovi. But the thing I remember most about it is he, Ronnie James Dio was on the show and quite a large proportion of the show is taken up with uh, Tommy Vance interviewing uh, Ronnie James Dio. I was really disappointed by this. I wanted to hear the music. Um, Ronnie James Dio was nothing to me at the time. He was just a guy, an old guy that was used to be in Black Sabbath and, and Rainbow. And, um, you know, he, he, to me, he just didn't seem relevant. And I just wasn't really aware of what Dio was would, would doing at the time. And it seems ridiculous and almost a shame to say that coming back now. But I wanted to hear about Cinderella, Wasp, Metallica and Anthrax. They were the four that really interested me on that lineup. Um, so ultimately the next day I did see uh, Dio live um, and I never appreciated it at all. And if I could go back and change one event in my life, uh, it would probably give, go back and give myself a bit of a slap and tell myself to, uh, uh, to, to pay attention to uh, Ronnie James Dio. In terms of um, memories of the show, I have picked up quite a few um, downloads of shows that are available uh, online. There is a really good uh, fandom website that has links to not all, but a lot of the shows. So clearly people have taped them uh, back in the day and they've been uploaded to this um, wiki site, which is amazing going back and listening to it. Uh, I never really thought to tape shows uh, back then. I, I really wish I had. But um, I did used to record, if there was a live show, live performance, um, I would tend to record that. Um, so it, particularly um, one um, live performance was Magnum that I particularly remember. And it's great that I've found a copy of that on YouTube uh, since as well. And Tommy Vance just cuts and says, right, we're now going to go over to uh, to Magnum. And then the next thing you know, there's uh, Bob Catley. Uh, and he's um, he's talking to the audience. He just says, we've just been joined by millions of viewers listening to um, uh, the, the Friday Rock Show. And, it, and there's a big cheer. And then uh, they played out that show. And I absolutely love that show. And it really got me into Magnum. And Magnum is a band that I've, I've pretty much loved ever since um and another thing i love from from the show as well was interviews uh, with the band uh, because it was great to hear the bands actually speak um i was only ever used to reading about them or uh, listening to their music and to hear their opinions and, and what they thought and when they were going to tour and what have you um there was a great interview with anthrax it was the first time i'd heard those guys speak um and that was around 87, I think. The band I'm talking about are Anthrax. The question that I've got to put to all of the members of the band individually first is, what has the British public done wrong? Here you sit in Europe, a long way from New York City, and we're not seeing you in, in England, Scotland, Wales, Northern oh, Ireland, uh, and ERA. So why? I mean, what do we do? I'm Frankie. I play bass, and you've done nothing wrong. It's just that on this tour, it just wasn't time yet to play... England and all that. Well, really, the story really behind is that we did do Donington last year. Uh, this is Danny speaking, and uh, usually two years in a row running, you're not you're not there the second year. So that's the reason that we didn't come to uh, to England. This is Scott, and they they apparently they had us booked in the marquee, and it just recently moved, 
And then they, they chickened out and they were afraid of having our audience in the streets and they said, we don't want to lose our license. And we said, what kind of club are you running? We thought this was a place, you know, a hard rock or heavy metal and, and you have no, no guts, you know, to, to put us in there. So, you know, so we were really disappointed because we weren't playing Britain and we figured this was a good chance to come in. We never had played the marquee before. Then they decided about two weeks before the show not to have us. So the reality of the situation, I, n I now turn to Mr. Belladonna, the reality is that you could have played the United Kingdom, at least the marquee, but good old Britain said no, no or those that rule. No. Basically, here we are. We're playing the Monsters of Rock. We're doing what they want us to do, and we'll be back to play everything and everything. We'll, do a full U uh, we'll be back for a full UK tour in March, I think. First off, before we play any music, can I ask you how you achieved the state of euphoria? The kids all achieved it. I mean, that's what... Um, I think it was after Donington. Um, Bruce Dickinson as well. There was a great, uh, great interview with him on that as well. Um, Another feature he did was called Lie Back and Enjoy It. And this was one where listeners would send in a list of tracks lasting around 20 minutes or so uh, that would be paid back to back. Um, later, there was something else called Rock Wars where uh, listeners could vote on a set of demos that he played. He picked two or three demos uh, that are just out and people could, could phone in. But it was such a... It's kind of a naive time, really. People, It, it was when people would write in on postcards and not only would um, uh, Tommy Vance read out the name of who'd, who'd written in, he'd also read out their address as well, which in this day and age would just be, you know, you, you get struck off for it. Um, but back then, let's say, a completely innocent times. Um, but of course, in this day and age, the internet is king. And it's possible to sample just about every... New release or old release, whether it be on YouTube, Bandcamp, Amazon, Spotify. The choice, I think, is overwhelming at times. But it's all there at the click of a button. Um, but is it better now? Yeah, I think it probably is, to be honest. Um, I mean, I like discovering new bands. I like discovering old releases I missed the first time around. Um, I've often mentioned I'm pretty ignorant of 70s heavy metal and that's completely down to my lack of exposure to it in the 80s. I didn't have people telling me to listen to this and to that and the radio was focusing mainly on the new and interesting stuff that was out at the time. The Friday Rock Show did play some of the older stuff but it focused and say on the new stuff and I was really just hungry for that. I was I was not interested in listening to stuff from when I was you know, four or five years old in the, in the 70s. One day the debut will take me and I'll dive head into head first into to 70s hard rock and metal and the internet and all it has to offer will be my perfect guide, no doubt. Um, and also I'm able to finally relive my experience of the final rock show. Uh, thanks to the people that did take the shows and did upload them and made them available to um, uh, for me to enjoy now. The 80s were awesome time though. Um, I made the best of what I have and I have Tommy Vance to thank for introducing me to some great music that helped me make me the person I am today, um, which I think is pretty fantastic. Uh, in the comment section below I'm going to put a few links to the, the, the Friday Rock Show archive if you're interested in a couple of videos I found of uh, specific shows, um, uh, mainly audio, well, it, it is audio obviously because it's radio, but um, specific shows with snippets I remember back then and particularly enjoyed. Um, the Anthrax interview and the Magnum Live performance is there as well. Um, but um, I hope you've enjoyed this little trip down memory lane with me. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments and thanks very much for watching. Cheers.